Thank you. So I'm Amy Gardner. Thank you for the opportunity to present some of our work here today and welcome to Houston. So these are our disclosures. Um, so background, as we know and as we've seen um, from some of the earlier presentations, the endoscopy is increasingly becoming a mainstay of general surgery practice. We know that practicing surgeons are performing um, over twice the amount of endoscopic procedures that they have been in the past and that residents are performing uh, more procedures um, with endoscopy now more than ever. And in response to this trend, the American Board of Surgery has uh, put some uh, things in place to make sure that our general surgery trainees are um, fully competent and trained in performing these types of procedures. So the flexible endoscopy curriculum, FEC, has multiple components, um, including web-based didactics, simulation, some actual clinical assessments, and then there's also a milestone along the way of passing um, a fundamentals of endoscopic surgery, the FES exam, which is virtual reality-based uh, with five um, tasks specifically. The problem is that uh, we saw a little bit earlier with Dr. Ritter's procedure is that people aren't passing it. When we cold test uh, general surgery residents who are graduating or are now in practice, we know that over 30% of them are failing and a lot of these failure rates are coming specifically from the manual skills exam. One of the um, criticisms, not, I don't know if we would say criticisms, but one of the responses to some of this data that's been presented at previous, you know, um, stages, meetings, et cetera, is that whenever we're testing these uh, general surgery graduates, that they may not be motivated to, um, they may not be pursuing, you know, uh, surgical specialties that require endoscopy, they may not be motivated to pass the exam, and therefore they may not reflect the real um, population that we're seeking to uh, examine. So the point of our study was to examine FES pass rates on the manual skills portion of the exam among fellows who are uh, specifically pursuing careers um, with GI specialties, where they're going to actually incorporate flexible endoscopy into practice. And we also wanted to know if their previous experiences, their previous procedural rates, uh, their confidence and career plans impact their uh, scores on the FES examination. So to do this, we had to go to the fellows. So we went to uh, the SAGES Flexible Endoscopy course for fellows that's held every year, um, sponsored by SAGES, a lot of industry um, participation. And they have two days of very heavy uh, skills training, lectures, case presentations, panels, et cetera. And so there are about 50 or so fellows who are invited uh, to attend this course every year. So we went to this course, and when they were invited to participate, we said, hey, would you like to come and take the FES exam as well? Would you be interested in taking this exam? It's free of charge. You'll take the skills portion. Uh, you'll get a little bit of um, information about it. Would you like to sign up? So about 30, uh, 29 of the 50 individuals said yes. And so they took the FES exam once they arrived at the course. And they also, as part of the course, filled out a survey about their previous um, experience in residency, about simulation, didactic components, their procedural experience, career goals, um, and also their confidence performing a specific set of 15 um, endoscopic procedures. So like I said, we had 29 fellows agree to participate, um, all but one of whom had completed an ACGME uh, residency. And their fellowship type, as you see, are mostly MIS, MIS bariatrics. When we asked about their prior experiences, so this was held in September, so they're a couple years into their fellowship, uh, but they had just graduated. When we asked about their curriculum around endoscopy specifically while they're in residency, about uh, almost half said that they had performed some sort of simulation-based curriculum. About a fifth said they'd uh, been involved in some sort of didactic curriculum. And then when we asked, well, then where did you get your experiences, um, a majority said that they got them just from clinical experiences and doing rotations on GI service, colorectal surgery, um, and also surgical endoscopy. And then we also asked them specifically about how many cases have you done to date. So up to this point, how many cases have you done? And it's broken down here by the procedure type. But what you'll see is that they've done a lot of cases. They have about 219 on average um, endoscopic procedures that they've done at this point. And keep in mind that when they graduated residency, uh, their minimum requirement just to uh, complete their residency was 85, 50 lowers, 35 uppers. So we asked them about um, how confident they were. As you see, a majority felt really confident in diagnostic uppers, um, felt really confident doing pegs as well. And then diagnostic colonoscopy, about 37 or so percent said that they were moderately or very confident, so four or five on like a Liger type scale. Um, the majority of which said that they would enter a teaching practice, either in private institution, academic institution, and that they would be teaching these procedures to others. And then a little over half said that they plan to implement endoscopy frequently or very frequently, with everyone else saying, well, occasionally. So what did we find? 
Well, we found that about 60%, so we had a few technological issues, um, so we had 25 full um, d data points for all of the portions of the exam, but we found that about 40% of all the fellows who were specifically pursuing a career in GI specialties uh, actually failed the manual portion of the skills exam. And it wasn't a one-to-one -one ratio, but about the uh, same amount actually failed um, task two, which is that loop reduction which we saw earlier. We also found that procedural experience didn't correlate with FES scores. And we looked at type, and we looked at uppers versus lowers, et cetera, um, but we weren't able to find any trends there. We did find, though, that their confidence, their self-reported confidence, um, did correlate with their FES scores. So um, the diagnostic uppers, diagnostic lowers, and PEGs all correlated with um, their FES pass rates. And 40% of the individuals who said that they were going to be doing this often, frequently, very frequently, failed the FES exam. So uh, what we found is that the failure rates do hold true for individuals who are specifically pursuing a career in which they'll be implementing flexible endoscopy in practice. Uh, we didn't find any relationship in our data set about um, endoscopy experience and uh, uh, correlating with exam scores. Um, the individuals who actually, uh, we also looked at a lot of you know, people who, who volunteered to take the exam versus those who didn't. Uh, we weren't able to find any differences there, but actually those who volunteered to take the exam actually had more um, average amount of cases. They had about 240 or so. Uh, definitely highlights the value of the FEC. So of course the fundamentals endoscopic surgery curriculum is multi, has multiple dimensions with this FES exam just being one of them. So it really highlights the value of these clinical assessments, um, the didactics, the other simulation based training and uh, really preparing our trainees to pass this exam. And um, as these individuals are you know, three, four months out of, um, from practice right now, practicing independently, it really um, highlights the need for having some training platforms for those in practice as well to make sure that they're uh, performing these procedures and competently. Uh, so limitations, of course, sample size. I will say that the sample is actually larger than other multi-institutional uh, studies looking at the pass rates of graduating general surgery trainees. Um, definitely there's a possibility, which would be a little bit concerning, I guess, but uh, they knew that they were going to take the exam as they signed up, you know, a week or two in advance, so it could be that they were actually more prepared than you might imagine, um, knowing that they're going to take this exam, so they could be, the baseline uh, failure rate could actually be higher, potentially. And um, finally, although we characterize these individuals as people who are specifically interested in this, um, in these procedures, you know, pursuing this career, et cetera, um, it could be that they pursued a fellowship or that they volunteered to take this, you know, stages course because they actually felt that they needed more training. So that could be, you know, a specialized sample here. But looking at their case numbers, it seemed to be a group of individuals who are actively pursuing these type of procedures. So take homes, 40% uh, of the fellows um, who are pursuing uh, fellowships in MIS, you know, bariatrics uh, failed. Uh, we need more data. Uh, we need more things in place than just case numbers because in our data set that didn't play a large role. And of course, we need to implement all of the um, components of the FEC. We need better curricula to um, guide us in this pathway. Thank you very much.